Hi, welcome to the Clinical Liver Disease video series. CLD is an official digital learning publication of the ASLOD. I'm Kim To, Assistant Professor of the Digestive Disease at Yale University and an Associate Editor of the Social Media section with CLD. I'm honored to be joined by Dr. Jacob George from Store Liver Center at the Westmead Hospital and University of Sydney to discuss his article on NAFLD and lean agents. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much, Ewan. So please tell me, what does the, the term lean fatty liver disease mean? So I think we've known ever since the first descriptions of fatty liver disease that there were a group of patients. I mean, the original description that we had um, back from the Mayo Clinic in 1980 suggested that most patients with fatty liver disease were obese, diabetic, and, and had other features of the metabolic syndrome. But then very early on, we also recognized that there were a few people who did not meet the body mass index criteria for fatty liver disease, yet they did have the same disease histologically with steatosis, inflammation, ballooning, and fibrosis in the liver. So lean fatty liver disease refers to fatty liver disease that occurs in people who by the ethnic specific definition of obesity and overweight would classify as being normal weight or lean. So in a Caucasian, lean fatty liver disease or lean maffled is occurring in patients with a BMI less than 25. And in Asian populations, it's a BMI of less than 23. Oh, wow. Um, speaking of which, how common is fatty liver disease in Asians? So again, this is a very difficult question to answer because there have been studies on fatty liver disease from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And you need to really, if you, it's somewhere in the range between about 6% in cohort studies all the way up to about 45%. Wow. I think I as a rule of thumb, I prefer to think that one in five people with fatty liver disease or 20% have a fatty liver disease and are lean. In other words, have a normal BMI. Is, is it more common than in Caucasians or other ethnic groups, you think? I think that's a very difficult uh, question to answer. So traditionally, when you look at the spread of BMIs across Asian populations, they have a larger prevalence of leaner patients by BMI criteria than obese patients. So you could actually artificially appear that you have a higher number of lean patients with fatty liver disease. To answer your specific question, mm -hmm. what you would need is to really do a population-based study looking at an unselected population involving lean and obese, biopsy all of them, and look at the prevalence. We don't have that sort of study. No. So the typical studies that we currently have are patients that are either lean or obese or overweight. They have abnormal liver tests and a doctor then decides to do a liver biopsy. And in those sorts of studies, it seems to be about one in five as a ballpark figure. There have been initial suggestions that it is more common in Asians, hmm. but I think you need to take that sort of information with a grain of salt. I see. And, and those who have fatty liver disease in, in lean pa um, patients, um, is there a natural history or the, do they have a better prognosis than fatty liver in obese patients? Again, this is one of the issues that is very uh, difficult to perfectly resolve today. So what we do know is that if you look at cross-sectional studies, it doesn't matter whether you're looking at Asians, Caucasians, people from the Middle East or other country. When you actually look at their clinical profile or their histological profile, they tend to have milder disease. So in other words, they tend to have lower le levels of insulin resistance, hypertension, prevalence of diabetes, uh, prevalence of dyslipidemia, low HDLs, and triglyceride levels. And equally on the biopsy, they seem to have 
less liver inflammation and less ballooning, less fibrosis than people who are overweight and obese. However, that's in cross-sectional studies. They seem to have a, a better clinical, metabolic, and hepatic profile. But when you look at long-term outcome studies, yeah. and again, these are subject to bias because most studies have not looked at a lean patient at day zero, looked at their characteristics in five years, 10 years, and 15 years. What they've usually tended to do is they've looked at their clinical phenotype and their histology at day zero, and then they look at the outcome 20 years later. And we don't know if those individuals have changed their clinical phenotype over that time. Mm. But in the studies that have actually been published, uh, it seems to be that the long-term outcome of lean fatty liver disease is equally as bad as for patients with overweight and obesity and fatty liver disease. There are some studies that say they have a less uh, aggressive clinical course. Lots of other studies saying that lean fatty liver patients do worse. Mm -hmm. And I think the answer lies somewhere in between in the absence of very coherent and cogent data. We just have to say it is today in 2020, we have to say it's equally likely to progress as patients with non-lean fatty liver disease. Given that information, you know, how do you approach you know, screening for this and managing pa um, patients with um, lean fatty liver disease. Can't tell them to go exercise and eat right <laughs> alone. Yeah, I think this is one of the big uh, lacunae in fatty liver disease research uh, in the sense that currently what we're doing is we're classifying a patient based on histology, mm -hmm. In other words, just four morphological features, fat, inflammation, ballooning, and fibrosis. And all the clinical trials that we do on pharmacotherapies, again, are just looking at those four features. And I think we may end up seeing differential responses. So an obese person with fatty liver disease may respond different from a diabetic with fatty liver disease, may respond differently to the same drug, uh, to a person with lean fatty liver disease. So in terms of pharmacotherapies, there's very little evidence out there of any specific drug that has a particular propensity to work for lean fatty liver disease. There is just no data. But what we do have is lifestyle intervention. And as you know, lifestyle intervention in studies in the average typical um, predominantly overweight obese cohort of patients with fatty liver disease says that exercise uh, and weight loss are beneficial. There have actually been some studies similarly undertaken in, in Asia. And what they've shown is that even if you have lean disease with the histological accompaniments of fatty liver disease, if they exercise and they have weight loss, they do improve clinically. So there is evidence that equally as important as fatty liver disease management with diet and exercise is important for overweight and obese. It is also important for lean patients. What is the target you would, you would advise these patients for like weight loss? You, like, you know, at three, five pounds, or do you guys shoot for a BMI that's, um, uh, that's more yeah. optimal or? So we don't have, perfect level one data for us to answer that question specifically. But if we look at most of the studies that have been done, in fact, it, it's better to go for a percentage weight loss. So if you think about it, we know that at least 3% weight loss has some benefits. To really get benefits in terms of liver histology, you need five to seven percent uh, weight loss. And personally, what I tend to do in my clinical practice, if I have a lean patient with the histological features of steatic hepatitis, then I would give them a, a diet and exercise recommendation, aiming for weight loss of at least five percent. 
preferably 7%. I see. Well, I, I guess, uh, you know, one of the things I would, you and I'd like to mention is that it is important when you do weight loss that the body actually doesn't know when you ask it to go on a calorie deficit, it doesn't know whether to lose fat or muscle. And maintaining muscle mass, because muscle is actually more metabolically active, is very important. When you recommend weight loss for them, it is important that you grassy you get them to have fat loss, not muscle mass. It's very important for preserving muscle mass and resistance exercise is even more important for persist for maintaining muscle mass. And this is what, particularly for the older patient with lean disease, uh, you really need to focus on maintaining muscle mass while achieving a fat loss. Yeah, that's really important, especially in our patients who are a lot of times suffer from sarcopenia as well. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much for that uh, interesting review of your paper. And, uh, and thank you again for joining us for another installment in the clinical liver disease video series. And thank you, our readers, for joining us. On behalf of all of us on the CLD team, I hope you found this interview as interesting and um, inspiring as I have. For more information, more information about NAFOLD in Asians, please uh, visit us at www.cldlearning.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at CLD Learning. Thanks again for watching.